Hello and welcome back for another clarinet tutorial from Nottingham Music Excellence. So in this video I'm going to play A1 out of the Grade 3 clarinet book Il Mio Tesoro, taken from the Don Giovanni Opera. And as well as playing the music I'm going to say a few words about the detail of the music and what you need to do to make that sound really awesome. And then you can have a go at playing along with the piano accompaniment yourself. And I have uploaded two different speeds of the piano accompaniment so Choose the one that suits you the best. And um, here we go. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So let's just have um, let's just say a few words about Don Giovanni. So it says um, in the aria, Don Ottavio, a young nobleman, urges the listener and uh, urges his fiance Donna Anna, Donna Anna, that he intends to secure vengeance uh, against the man who murdered her father. And uh, a very famous little aria. This very famous melody played on all sorts of instruments. Um, but I do like this arrangement by David Blackwell and I, I think it works really well for clarinet and piano. And I think as with any Mozart, you know, I think to make it sound really beautiful is a bit harder than it looks on the page. You've got to play it with a really beautiful sound and just really delicate and tidy phrasing. And so let's just have a look at the first eight bars. So quite a bit of detail just in these first few bars actually that you can put in there. So notice there, quaver, quaver, crotchet. Um, so don't play those three notes exactly the same. And let's talk about this rhythm. So not an easy little rhythm, this. Um, so it's a crotchet tied to a dotted quaver semiquaver. Now, if you divide all of that up into semiquavers, that will give you a bit of a clue as to how how to try and tuck in that last semiquaver of the two beats. So if I play that F there on the first one, if I play it all in semiquavers, so now you can hear exactly how quick that G has got to be <clears throat> and where to place it. So. And moving on through bar 11. Again, um, a little bit of a tricky thing to do. Again, when I'm playing it with the uh, when I'm playing it with the backing track, I'm sort of limited a little bit as to what I can do with the writ there because I've got to kind of follow the backing track. But um, do try and put that writ in there. I always think these little sort of writs and rows are quite good for pupils to just see if they can get them in there and see if they can not only play them, but sort of demonstrate to the pianist exactly how they're going to play them. And I think that's the perhaps the next level up is try and conduct it a little bit and just show the pianist when that next bar is going to arrive. So. and then straight back to a tempo on the next bar. So play around with that a little bit. Do put that writ in there. It just adds a nice bit of what you might call kind of Mozart flavor in there, I think. And I think through this next bars, these next few bars, just try and let the sound grow a little bit 
you know, um, it's marked MF, so a bit more volume. Okay, so the next little tricky bit with the dotted Kramer semi-quavers. Um, <clears throat> just be careful this doesn't turn into dum da dum da dum dum. Just be careful it doesn't start to turn into a sort of a swingy 6-8 sort of rhythm. So dum da dum da dum. So three quarters and a quarter of a beat. Again, you can do that semi-quaver thing if you want to, just to learn how to wear, just to learn the speed of that semi-quaver. So the, the E, like the dotted quaver, would be worth three semi-quavers, and then the D would be that fourth semi-quaver in the beat. So da 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 dum. You could actually semi-quaver that whole bar, couldn't you? Um... And then take out the semi-quavers that you don't want. And that really sort of breaks down all the speed of all the individual semi-quavers within those beats. And it might just sort of give you a better feel of where to place that, where to place that semi-quaver. And moving on, last few bars, 22, 23, a good opportunity. I think grade three, this might be quite a high note for you going up to this top C. So <laughs> a lot of teachers always say support the sound. Not sure what that kind of, um, that really very helpful, but... I think make sure you've got a steady air supply through the instrument, but just make sure that you're focusing that air really neatly here as well. Make sure that you've got, I think make sure you've got the right grip and perhaps the right reed and mouthpiece sort of set up. I think you'll need, um, I don't think a one and a half will be any good, you know, as you're moving into this part of the instrument. You'll need perhaps at least a strength two reed. And maybe if you're using say like a Yamaha 4C mouthpiece, you might want to move to a 5C or a 6C just to slightly open up that sound and it might give you better success on these high notes if you're struggling to sort of get that top C in tune. And again, notice I'm sort of just lifting up the clarinet a little bit. I'm kind of helping it all along the way a little bit. Make sure you're not sort of, make sure you're not playing too straight down there. Sort of, um, I tend to teach pupils like, this balancing trick with the thumb here. So that that um, position at which I hold the clarinet, which it balances, is actually kind of the, the angle at which I play the instrument. Um, so on that top note. So I certainly don't want to be holding it down there like really straight. So think about that as well. The angle of the instrument might just help you get the right kind of shape here, get the right angle on the mouthpiece and um, that might just help you get those top notes a bit better as well. But I think number one, fundamentally, make sure you've got that good air supply going through the instrument and make sure the airflow is really continuous through that bar. Don't try and sort of play the top C as a separate note. Um, I think it's probably useful to tongue that note, but don't use that as a way to stop the air. Make sure you blow continuously through that, I think. So... So you could even just like I did there, take out those two semi-quavers and, as in just practice the long notes going up to that C. And watch coming down from the C, A to F, that always catches pupils out, doesn't it? Get those two fingers working and then get those two fingers working. So just watch those intervals on the way back down. So I think that's all I need to say on the details. So I think just to summarise, when you play Mozart, you know, you can't get away with anything. The examiners will know this tune inside out. Um, so play it with a beautiful sound, really delicate and accurate phrasing and see if you can play it with the piano accompaniment yourself now and see if you can get it really in time. And of course, if you have watched the video and used the tutorial, don't forget to support the channel by clicking that like button and um, of course do leave a comment in that section below and let me know how you're getting on with grade five. 
But that's it for this one. Have a go at the accompaniment now and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.